welcome back to my little studio. If this is your first time, I'm Reese. Welcome. Um, this past week, I got a chance to finally get away. Um, I got to go to the Carolinas to get a little bit more of the cooler weather before hard weather really hits Florida. It's already kind of in the 80s off and on and uh, we're about to completely lose all of that and be straight back into the heat that always tends to be present here. So I, loving the cooler weather as I do, I decided to go visit my family and get away for a few days and we had a great time. I'm gonna share a few clips of that a little bit later on in the video. Um, but before I left, if you saw last week's video, I, I caught a cold. Um, luckily, it wasn't too bad of a cold. It was very mild. I confirmed with my cousin. She was cool with the situation. It was mostly just a nasal throat sort of thing, but it was very mild because I caught it at a time using some medication to kind of subdue the cold, and it seemed to work pretty well. So thankfully that worked out because we were still able to get out and do some things and have some fun. But this week I thought I would talk to you a bit about something I've been thinking a lot about uh, again, which is oil paints. Um, I don't know how many of you are slightly off put by oil paints or maybe you find them intimidating. And today I wanna to share with you some really simple methods um, on how you can get started using some of my own work. Um, I actually have a couple of paintings that are kind of like in mid transitory places, I guess, and their development, they never were completed for whatever reason. Um, and so I thought I would just share with you on how I'm doing that. And these simple methods are something that you can use to get started um, thinking about getting a few materials and get started yourself. What I do want to tell you is, is that when it comes to oil paints, Quality does matter. If you get the cheapest type of oil paint, it impacts you because it doesn't have uh, enough binder and stuff in it and it will hinder your results. And I'm not saying you gotta you get the most expensive version of it, but you can get kind of a in-between professional version and it will help you at least get more familiar with how it should feel. And other than that, I don't use any mediums or at least not all the time. Certainly not when I first got started because I also was very intimidated by oil painting. I wanted to learn how to do it, but I was intimidated by mediums. You might have that problem too, but getting started, you really don't need all that. All you need is a good quality oil paint and some Gemsol. Um, I know you probably have heard of turpentine and yes, you can use turpentine, but I would not recommend it because it's very odiferous, it's very smelly and it's not good for your lungs to be around. So I always use Gamsol uh, for the studio because it doesn't have those effects and it's more, I think it's safer. Don't quote me on that, but <laughs> I know that this is what most of the professional artists use is Gamsol and the way that I was taught to paint was using Gamsol um, after a short stint with turpentine. And uh, especially if you're going to be in a room with other students, like if you're going to a workshop or anything, they always tell you to bring Gamsol. Never, 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 ever turpentine because of its smelliness and it's not good. So that's all you really need to get started. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit about today. So I'm just going to do this handheld so I can show you my little palette. It's not pretty. Whenever I use my oil paints, it's not pretty. I have a little cart, a little foldy cart that um, I use to keep my all my mixing paints on this cart. But this particular palette is a glass palette inside a um, it was a watercolor palette, I think, initially, but I found a glass palette that fits right in there, and that's what I use typically 
you will see it's not very attractive and clean and pretty, but this is, this is, this is often what a palette will look like. Anyways, one thing I will tell you not to get is don't get this Academy brand. I would not recommend this simply because the binders are not good. This is about as cheap as you can go. Unless you just want to play and you just want to play with mixing, it's, I, feel, I feel like it's just a waste of money. My two cents on that. I would also not get this Daler Rowan paint. Um, also, same kind of lower end quality in my opinion. Nice mid-range brand is this Winsor Newton Artists Oil that you can often find at places like Michael's um, or any of the other craft type stores. This is kind of a mid-range uh, artist grade um, paint, oil paint. And you'll see I have the whole little collection here. This is often what I have, is I have a CAD yellow, CAD red, a French Antimarine Viridian Sap, um, because I usually like having sap green on my palette, even when I do watercolors, because I feel like I get to um, a place when I'm using my, like doing landscapes, that it's just where the green is more in a better place. I find when I try to mix my greens, it gets into a weird bluish green range that doesn't look quite as natural and healthy. Then I have um, a Lizarin Crimson, um, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and then I have a Mars Black, but I also have um, Paints Gray. I love this Rembrandt brand. They have a couple of Paints Gray and another gray that I can't remember the name of it that I really like a lot. Really good quality paint in my opinion. I have that and I have this Rouge Oxide Transparent in Rembrandt. And then for my white, I like buying this really big um, tube of Permalba paint, white oil paint. You get a lot for um, your buck. And um, on the higher end, which is newer, is this Williamsburg handmade titanium white, which I'm really kind of preserving for the newer paints that I've got. This is kind of my older set, but I'm when I laying out my palette. This is often what you will see on my palette. Um, but you could even go down to even fewer things, mostly your primaries. It's nice to have at least one brown on your palette and one, uh, I would say out of anything, make sure you have a paint gray because that way you don't have to spend too much time trying to mix something and make it look in the darker range that you want. It's a nice go-to. So this is the general collection of what I have as far as colors go. This is what I have when it comes to brushes. I mostly have bristle brushes, both in filberts and flats and rounds. And um, I have everything from Princeton to Treckle, Galleria. This is just part of my collection that I've gathered over the years. Um, and um, you can get the cheaper brushes, like at some of the craft stores, um, or you can order from Treco, like this brush right here with the silver line through it. And as long as you treat them really well and make sure you take care of them in the end of the day, they last a good long time, unless you're painting around the clock, which I am not. Finally, when it comes to oh, what medium you would use um, or what cleaner you would, you, you would use, this is Gamsol, which is a mineral spirit. You can use this because there's already binders, oils in the oil paints, especially if you could buy a good quality oil paint like I was showing you. You can mix the oils straight with a little bit of Gamsol on the go, especially if you're out in the field. You don't have to worry about mixing a bunch of other things unless you just want to. But when you're just getting started, it's great just to have a simple method and that always starts with um, something like Gamsol and just straight mixing into your oil paints. So, but this is also good. This is the only thing I use anymore. And um, especially if you're going to a workshop, 
Don't ever buy anything that's not odorless, like a turpentine. They'll probably tell you that if you're going to a workshop, but this is all they buy now. It's good for your studio safety, as it says. So this is a painting that I started a while back um, and that I never quite completed. Um, I started this in 2020 during our special time. And um, it was some roses that I bought and I let dry and hanging upside down. Um, and I had a couple of notes that were gonna be up here. And it was actually set up on some butcher paper that I crumpled up. And so that's what all the crinkles are. And you can see how the sun came in from the window over here. And that's what this line is about. This is all the shadows. Um, but it was so much work and life became complicated. And then I just kind of stopped and I never finished it. So I'm just using this as basically a demonstration because I'm going to just mix up some of these colors a little bit just to show you um, what I was doing. Now, are you wondering whether or not you can paint over dried oil paint? As long as it has not been varnished, which this has not, yes, you can. Um, often it's good to put in, um, there's some of this product called like oleo gel, I believe, and um, it just helps basically make it where the colors are consistent as if they were wet and easier to match up because otherwise you might have to paint the whole thing. Um, will I do that today? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I'm a bit of a rebel like that and it doesn't really matter because I don't have a commitment to anything here. We're just gonna maybe touch up some of these leaves a little bit just to show you a basic mixing of what I do um, there's aspects of this painting that I like. I kind of like how the ribbon kind of disappears um, and was never completed really. Um, but there are things that need to be done. Patches in here and that sort of thing. And I still need to do like the words that I was going to put on here, which is basically like a message saying, telling you to buy your own roses. You know, when no one buys you roses, buy your own roses, <laughs> buy your own damn roses. Uh, anyways, and love yourself always. Um, but anyways, it was like, I can't really tell you that it had any kind of deep meaning. It was just an idea I had. And I like the challenge of trying to do the paper, um, but I no longer have the setup anymore. So I, I could go back and look at old reference photos um, but I don't mind the way it looks right now. Just some little things need to be touched up. So the thing I use is my palette knife and some paper towels. And then I need my container for my paints, which this is mine. It's well loved. <laughs> I've had it for a while. I have a big one and then I have a small one that um, I use if I go out in the field. So often what I will do is when I mix up a color on my palette, I will pick it up when I think I'm close and kind of see if I'm matching some of the spots where I want to go. Now this is a variation. This, These leaves are a variation of kind of um, a bluish green, anything from a light to um, a bluish green to a dark bluish green. And then there were a little bit of pops of the lighter green in there. Um, so this is one way that I do that. Once you mix it up, you can see you can get a nice sampling of color. And if you're really not sure, looking at it on your palette knife, you could e even put it on a card and hold it up next to a spot. So let's just see if I can get this to, if I'm pretty happy with that color. That's a good starting place. There's another variation 
on my colors for that leaf. So there's a secondary color. And of course, so we try to pre-mix a little bit to what we think we might be using. And then you mix on the palette as you go um, and slowly building up. And of course, if I had my reference or if I had my actual setup still, I'd be more spot on. But today we're just doing a, a short, quick sample of me doing this so that you can see how it works um, and what materials that I'm using. So I put a little bit of Gamsol on my brush. I don't have any, anything to look at really. Probably what I should do is maybe get some more, because this is not something that's going to be completed today, um, but I should probably get some more roses and um, maybe try to use um, some new references for my leaves. Oopsie, I have to make that into a longer leaf. I think that there's a rose right here. Now sometimes you will have to let things dry. Otherwise you're gonna get color mixing. Um, I can see that there's probably a little rosebud right here that I had drafted out a while back. So I might be able to get away with a little bit of it. It's kind of dangerous to be eyeballing things like this, but I just thought for demo purposes today, I would give it a shot. So I'm just cleaning my brush now. This is not a very big brush because I'm doing some detail. This is the Galleria Filbert by Windsor & Newton. It's made from England. I think I just got this from Michaels, believe it or not. So what I have on my brush right now is a little bit of Alizarin Crimson. Rouge Oxide Transparent from Rembrandt, which was this one that I shared with you. And a touch of French Ultramarine Blue. And let's see where we're at here with this. It's very transparent, so I need to add Let's see, this is, I added a bit of my white in there. This is basically like a rosebud shape. I can't remember exactly what I used before, but I do see the alizarin crimson in, in here, especially right here. Um, there's probably more blues. This is the 
problem with trying to match a painting with something that you've done in the past. It takes more time to be able to try to match your past results. So that's why we're not going to be able to get very far on this today for this video because there is no way to do something overly detailed on a video without it being cut up, spat up, that sort of thing because it takes time. Um, you'll get the gist of the process, I think. Now I made my own version of a lizard and crimson basically using French Old Marine Blue, Cad Red, and a little bit of the the um, Burnt Umber to make something less transparent this time. And I might need to actually add in a bit of Payne's Gray or um, something like the lamp black or something like that to give it more of a pop and a feel of the correct value that I want as it moves away from the light. I think you can kind of see how this is actually a petal in the light and this side it's not I think we could actually pop that a little bit right there and make it look like part of it is coming back into the light. So we see a little bit more of a form there. It was going the stem was going back and forth between being in the green range to being more brown brownish as it was dying so that will make it a bit of a challenge to be seen this leaf is slightly seen here. I think it's going to make the difference in this particular um, stem is going to be the lights and the darks. But what's tricky is up here where it's above the paper it's uh, more in the light the darker colors and at the top it's um, in the bottom part it's lighter so <laughs> it's tricky. But to be honest with you, before I worry too much about up here, I really need to put in a little bit more of a foundation for this paper bag in the background. So now I've mixed closer to my paper bag color. Um, you can see I'm pretty close, I think. Of course it varies no matter where you are. You can see that's too late. That's about spot on. So that was my foundation color that I started with. OK, 
Again, I'm just trying to see if I can get this thing a little closer with no anticipation of finishing today for this quick demo. Look how spot on that was right there. That color perfectly matched right there. To get the paper bag, I got a mixture of burnt sienna, raw umber, a little bit of white, and a touch of the French ultramarine, depending on where you are and the level of values. And there are so many values in here. And something as simple as a paper bag. And there's all these shadows with all the ribbon and the stems that I never had ever gotten back into this to make it look deeper. I had concentrated on everything else, but initially And I would say when it comes to painting, it's basically the art of pushing and pulling. That's pretty much what it is. And the level of accuracy probably depends on your patience and your desires. I do not have that desire to make anything look overly detailed um, that much. I did a portrait once because I was trying to do a master's copy and um, I had to do that then. And I'm brushing because really I'm just trying to work it into that dryer paint that's underneath there. Normally I wouldn't be rubbing like that. I'd just be putting paint down like this and and you know you might occasionally do some blending but and I you usually don't hold your brush like this close. You're usually back here at the back of the brush painting. That's the better way to go but I was just trying to get my paints to adhere. And we're basically just creating a new area, a new surface for the paint to be on top of. A new foundation, basically a new foundation for the layers that are to come. But you see, all I've been doing is just using the paint out of my tubes and my Gamsol to paint today. So that's basically what I was wanting to show you, how it works. Um, and obviously working back into a painting. Um, next time I will actually do a painting from the start, just so you can see what that looks like. But the reason why I started this today, the reason why I did this way, is that I wanted to show you the materials I was using so that we don't have to go over that again next time, um, even though I might basically touch upon it. But um, I, I just wanted to work on this for one thing because really it just needed to be done. I have put this off far too long. And it needed, it needs to be, it needs to be, it needs to be, if nothing, taken to a more complete stage. Even if it's not 100% finished, finished. But we shall see. And if not, if I hate it, then I will paint over it. 
I almost threw this painting away, believe it or not. Because I, I get into a mood sometimes and I'm like, I just don't want to see things anymore. And then I sometimes regret that. I'm kind of liking it a little better for my base. Clean my brush off again. There's a point where your gamsol is going to get dirty. My gloves are already getting pretty dirty. Let's see if I can fake this ribbon a little bit. Camera good enough for you to see. So what's happening with this ribbon is that it's coming down and twisting right here to twist. And you see often I will use my pinky to lay it on the canvas, especially if it's wet, you will use your pinky um, and be careful about where you put your pinky as a place to just ground your hand to anchor it and to stabilize it. And then you might have to clean up some little pinky marks here and there. But that's how that works. So I still have a bit to go, but that's what I got done. I had to stop tucking for a bit because it's really hard to really paint unless you're painting super quick and loose um, without your mind just like shutting down and that's what was going on. So that's where I got. You can see how messy my palette got. Pretty messy, messy paint jar. All the variations of magenta and reds and greens for the leaves and the siennas for um, that bag area. So I've got a bit to clean up now, but that's where I'm going to leave it for now. And Usually I'm not quite this messy when I'm doing something and I'm laying out a full palette. It's a little bit more where the mess is in the middle. But since this was just a touch up, that's why we have kind of a mess. Fun. So with that done, I'm going to end the video here. Um, and I'm just going to show you some highlights from my week this past week in the Carolinas. So I hope that you enjoy. And I um, hope that something today sparks some creativity um, and makes you want to get out and paint. So, but that's it. Wishing you all well. Have a beautiful week. Hanging out in Winston-Salem, just hanging out with my family today, taking pictures because it's really pretty. It's kind of like Colonial Williamsburg around here, going to old houses and just, um, you know, seeing people doing reenactment type work. 
but no time to paint or draw, but taking lots of pictures and videos like this one to um, maybe do something a little bit later, so we'll see. That's a pretty beautiful day, 74, is high? Not bad.